Hello. Today I am going to be talking about exercise with one of my very favorite people, Cindy Lay from Cindy Lay Fitness. Um, if you are someone who has trouble staying motivated in the gym or maybe you use every excuse in the book not to go to the gym um, or you put it off for the until tomorrow or maybe you just don't even know what type of exercise to do in the first place, well, today we're going to be talking about all of this and a whole lot more. I'm here with my very own personal trainer, Cindy Lay. She is the founder of Cindy Lay Fitness, and as you will find through our, the course of this conversation, she is also quite an athlete, and we'll get more into that a little bit later. But first, without further ado, let me introduce Cindy. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Marissa. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. I'm so excited to talk to you today because, as you know, I am a huge exercise fanatic, and this is a topic that is very close to my heart and um, at the top of my list of interests. So um, I want you to just start out by telling me a little bit about what you do um, as the founder of Cindy Life Fitness and as a personal trainer, because as I've found through working with you, it is certainly a whole lot more than just personal training. Okay, so I am an independent personal trainer and I also run my own boot camp. Um, I specialize in CrossFit kettlebell training, but not limited to that. I've also worked with many brides to help them get in shape for their wedding, prenatal clients, uh, senior clients, and you know everything under the sun. So Sunny Life Fitness is about having a healthier lifestyle, but not only physically, but mentally as well. I believe everybody should exercise, but at the same time, you have to take care of not just only your body, but also your mind. So that's really important to me, not only for what I can do for my client, but what I can enable them for them to do for themselves. Most people, they tend to get lost. They think, you know, if I'm not exercising, then, you know, everything falls apart. But there are things, there are times where you can't exercise, but you can do things like taking some extra stairs or steps, being a little bit more active instead of sitting all day, taking the, you know, walk a little bit more, um, things like that, and then just trying to focus on eating healthier as well. Great. Yeah, so boot camp, that sounds a little scary. I have been to one of your boot camp classes, and, <laughs> and it, was, it was a hard workout, let me tell you about that. Who are the type of people that attend your boot camp classes, and what kinds of things do you teach? Well, everyone is welcome to attend my boot camp class, but boot camp itself, the title comes from the Army, so it's a generic term. It's just my version of boot camp. I'm not a drill sergeant, so I would never make you feel like you're nothing while yelling at you or screaming at you. That's totally not my style. Um, I like to cater to everyone, but most of the clients or students that come to my class, they're women anywhere from 20s, 30s, 40s, even 50s, um, men who don't mind being in the company of women. And, uh, but if, again, if you're looking for a drill sergeant, I'm not that person. I will make you work hard, but I'm not going to... Um, make you vomit or faint. That's not my style. Yeah, and I can definitely attest to that because, you know, that's one of the things that I found that set you apart as a personal trainer is that you are so supportive but also being, while also being motivating. So tell me a little bit more about, I mean, there's thousands of trainers all over the world. What makes you different besides what I just mentioned? <laughs> well, to me, fitness should be about fun. If it's not, then you're not having a good time. But you know, it doesn't have to be boring. It doesn't have to be the same routine. Um, a lot of people, if they don't have a personal trainer, they will do what they know for not only months, years, and then they wonder why they don't have results anymore. So, again, um, I like to educate my clients and my students, and I believe when you can educate them, you know, that will establish a better relationship because I'm not afraid to teach people what, you know, they need to know because they can take that with them throughout their whole lives. You know, there will, there will be times, like I just lost one of my longest clients because she moved away to another state. She got married, but that's going to happen. So I try to teach them the skills that they need that they can carry with them through the rest of their lives. 
Right. It's like that that saying, and this that's the same thing that I do in my coaching business too. But it's like that saying, teach a a person to fish, or what what is it? <laughs> you teach them to fly. <laughs> right. Well, give them a fish or teach them a fish or whatever. I don't know. Never mind. I just totally messed that give up. Give them the wings. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. I mean, you do. You teach the skills, and then they take that with them for the rest of their lives, and that is what makes that's what makes the difference, and that what that's what brings about change, and what what creates lifelong habits. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So you're like the fittest person in the world. Um, I remember when I took boot camp with you for the first time, I saw your body and I was like, I, that's the body that I want and I'm going to hire her as my personal trainer. <laughs> well, you're um, very sweet, Marissa. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, how, tell everyone, how do you work out? Okay. Um, I do have to say the fittest woman in the world belongs to the woman that won the CrossFit game, so I do not want to get into trouble. <laughs> and I'm nowhere near that. I know personally. <laughs> but thank you. That's so sweet of you. Um, well, most of my training is CrossFit. Um, I've always loved lifting weights. And the great thing about um, being involved in a community such as CrossFit is that it's okay for women all shapes and sizes to have muscle, and it's feminine. It doesn't have to be looked down upon, and I love that. And I love, you know, trying to build lean muscle. And you know, it just it just feels very empowering um, to be able to do anything and everything. So the type of training that I do, I, I'll work out five days a week, but I'll balance balance it out between strength, between endurance. Um, some days when I'm not feeling, you know, 100%, I'll do a little lighter workouts, you know, and then I'll take rest days. Um, that's the main training that I do, but I pole dancing is also mm -hmm. one of my favorite. <laughs> and it's because it's something that's fun, you know, it's something that's completely different, but you're still having a good time doing it. But I, I just love being active, so surfing, I try to surf every chance I get, water sports, paddle board, hiking, obstacle races, I just love being active any way I can, but I believe it's something you should enjoy. Yeah, and we, you, you and I totally have the same philosophy on, on exercises, but it's got to be fun. Like, yeah. you have to choose something that you enjoy, and that's why yeah. you'll stick to and that's when and why you'll stick to it. Um, and I love that you mix it up with, with CrossFit. You do, I know you do some yoga, you do pole dancing. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so you've been a CrossFitter forever, like, before CrossFit was, like, a thing. Um, mm. Not really. CrossFit has been around since the 80s, but it was much more underground. It has mm -hmm. definitely changed, especially because it's gotten more exposure through ESPN, the CrossFit Games, and Reebok has taken over. Mm -hmm. But I started about four years ago, yeah. and since then, I still it's still evolving. So I'm curious, do you eat a paleo diet like most CrossFit people do, or are you not a paleo person? I have to say, since I started CrossFit, my body, I like to listen to my body. I've always eat, I always like to eat lean protein veggies and complex carbs, but my body craved more meat and mm. also more good fats. Whereas in the past, I would be afraid to, you know, indulge too much, even if it was like nuts or avocado. Now I feel that when I do eat that, it gives me more energy. Mm. But I do eat dairy but a minimal amount of dairy, such as yogurt, and I do like carbs every now and then, and I, I don't believe in restricting myself. And sometimes, um, for those type of intense workouts, such as CrossFit, I you can't last mm -hmm. uh, just on paleo alone. I don't believe that. But again, you have to listen to your body. Yep. It's, again, that's where you and I align a lot, is listening to your body. So. Mm -hmm. Um, and let's talk a little bit about like motivation. As a personal trainer, I'm sure you've heard every excuse in the book for you know why people aren't working out or why they can't or don't want to or what, what they're struggling with. So what's that sort of like the number one excuse you hear people say, and how have you helped them overcome those excuses? The number one excuse I would have to say is I don't have time, which yes. to me is. Uh, not an excuse. <laughs> 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 uh, 
if you have five minutes a day to talk on the phone, five minutes to do something else, a five-minute workout is better than no workout. So again, going back to teaching people skills, I will do a workout such as Tabata in my classes, which is a four-minute workout. Very simple. You pick one exercise, four minutes, eight rounds. If you have four minutes a day, then you don't have any excuse. So again, also, there are people that do have very busy jobs. But uh, being healthy is a lifestyle. So I don't believe out of seven days of the week you can't pick one, two, or three days that you can't dedicate some time mm -hmm. into exercise. It does not need to be an hour. If you don't have an hour, it could be 20 minutes. It could be 10 minutes. You can, again, uh, instead of taking the train all the time, uh, take it a couple of stops back and walk 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. There's always, always time. You have to make time. Yeah, it's it's making yourself a priority. It's it's part of your self care. You know, that's what it has to be. It's a mindset shift, I think, sometimes for mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Um, so one of the things that I noticed when you and I worked out together, before we ever moved a muscle or lifted a weight, you did something and you asked me how I was feeling that day, and I know there was a reason for it. So, kind of, can you walk me through like? why you did that and also um, you know how people who don't have a personal trainer can sort of apply that same sort of checking in with themselves um. well in a busy city like New York everybody's on a high level of stress whether they want to believe it or not so my first concern when I go to my clients whether it's 5.30 in the morning or 7 p.m. at night how are you doing? How are you feeling? Okay. Our bodies are not machines. Our minds are not machines. You may not have had sleep or didn't sleep very well. Maybe you had food poisoning. You're overcoming an Ill illness. Maybe you were upset about something from your personal or, you know, professional life. That all affects you, you know? I mean, obviously you come to exercise to relieve that, but I like to get into my client's psyche to find out, okay, where are you at today? Because sometimes my clients won't tell me and then I could tell when something's bothering them. So it's really important for me to be like, okay, what's up? You know, I want to motivate that person to relieve whatever's off their chest by not just exercise and, you know, just letting go of their mind. Because it makes a better workout. <laughs> yeah, it totally does. And I definitely I just really appreciated that you would that you would ask me because so many times when I've worked out with other trainers before, they just kind of like we just you know, just go into whatever the workout was for that day, but you really asked and then made adjustments based on how I told you I was feeling. And I remember when we were, um, there were times, you know, in the past where I was, you know, in a very stressed out state and I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't at my best and I wasn't performing at my peak and, and I appreciated that you would ask me and that we could, you know, adjust the workout accordingly. So that was, that was helpful. And I think that it's important also, you know, to, you know, a lot of times we go through our day, like you said, we're not robots, but we tend to go through our day like robots, so it's really good to sort of sometimes slow down and ask your body, what do I need today? What's going on for me today? What do I really need? Not what am I about to do that I do every day at 3 or 4 yeah. o'clock, but, but what, do, what do I really need at this time? Maybe sometimes it's a nap and not a workout. Maybe you, could, <laughs> maybe you, maybe you had yeah. to do a workout, you know? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think that is so important because the other thing, especially if you're a female, it could be that time of the month, and I will have clients that, my back hurts. I'm just not feeling 100%. I don't feel right. Okay, well, why don't we do something else? Why don't we modify? I will always do that, yeah. you know, because you don't want to get injured. Right. You know? That's going to yeah. make it worse. Yeah. Plus, you don't make when you're when you're forcing your body to do something that it's not feeling. Mm -hmm. You're that's you don't make progress no. at all, no. regardless of whether you're injured or not. But um, so, what advice would you give someone who feels either unmotivated to start an exercise routine or feels stuck in a rut with with the exercise routine that they're currently doing? Well, if the person hasn't started an exercise routine, I would say start with baby steps. I think far too often people think, okay, it's all or nothing, which usually ends up in failure. If you start with, okay, what can I do today? You know, going back to, okay, can you exercise for five minutes? Can you exercise for ten minutes? 
everything can always become longer or shorter. Maybe you could stretch a little bit more. Things that are manageable, they have to be manageable. If you're like, well, I'm going to run 10 miles tomorrow and you haven't done anything in a long time, that's not going to work. Um, so again, baby steps. For somebody that's been doing the same routine over and over and over, uh, routine is the enemy. You've hit a plateau already. You're not seeing the gains. You're not feeling, you're like, oh, well, you know, I, I can't do much more. Take a break. Do something else. Do something different that you don't normally do. Cross training is really important. Most people don't. They stick with what they know, whether it's running on the treadmill, doing the elliptical, uh, doing the same routine they have for years. You should never do that. You should switch it up. So again, go out there and find something that you can try. There's tons of classes you can try out there. There, If not, you can work with a personal trainer. But there's always something for everyone. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's always so several things for everyone, I feel. Yes. Yes. So like, you know, you've got to sort of like get out of your comfort zone and branch out a little bit and try something new um, yes. that you've never tried before and, and be willing to be the person in the back of the class who doesn't know what they're doing um, just to try something different. I've been different. that person. I've been that person. <laughs> it's okay. And, and be okay with it. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing wrong with yeah. that. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that I've struggled with in my past and I've talked about on my blog a little bit is, is exercise addiction and overtraining. Um, do you feel that, you know, exercise can ever be too much of a good thing? Can you, can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. And maybe it's me, but I feel uh, it's more of a common issue amongst women because unfortunately in our society um, places a lot of stress and, uh, and it's, uh, there are, it's a lot more harsh in women to have a certain self-image, uh, self-esteem. So then we tend to think, oh my gosh, we just need to work out more so we can be skinnier. Whereas that tends to backfire often because if you overtrain, you'll become more tired, more fatigued. You won't have energy. Uh, you won't, you'll be losing instead of making gains. Mm -hmm. So I think everyone I've come across has gone through at some point, including myself. And it's just really like, again, being in tune with your mind and body and saying, maybe I need a rest day. Maybe I don't need to do anything. Mm -hmm. um, there have been plenty of times where I'm like, OK, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to work out and do this. And then I start, my body's like, no, not happening. Right. So again, it's just, it's, it's really hard, but it's more of a, it's a mindset. And you really have to be in tune with your mind. Yeah, and, and just listen, learning how to listen to your body. And I mean, it's something that has been um, something that I've been working on for the past several years. And through becoming a health coach, I've really learned how to listen to my body. But I can look back on, you know, five, ten, ten years ago, and I was I had no idea what my body needed or wanted. It was all in my mind, and I had to really get out of my mind and into my body and sort of feel what was going on. So, yeah. So, Cindy, this has been great. I'd love for you to tell us where we can find you online, um, your website, and I think you have like you have some kind of free guide up there too. So, can you tell us what that's about? So, my website, you can find me under www.cindylivefitness.com. So, it's C I N D Y L E I Fitness. I'm also on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and I try to keep my followers motivated, you know, um, I like to put out a lot of inspirational quotes because I believe, again, and um, I have a holistic approach to my training, so where if you're connected with your mind, you should be connected to your body, and um, you can find me that way online. It's uh, very easy. <laughs> Great. Yeah, and you have, like, uh, if you sign up on, on your website, you've got you can download, what, five fat-burning workouts? Is that what you have up yes, there right now? Yes, okay. yes, sorry. Great. Um, yeah. So there are five, yes, there are five simple um, exercises and workouts that everyone can do, and I describe what they are. And mainly, they're, you just need your body. Um, so it's anything you can do with your body weight. One of them is a jump rope. But it's pretty, it's pretty simple, so it's pretty black and white. <laughs> Great, yeah, things that you can take on the road with you when you're traveling or if you're just in your apartment pulled up one day and you just want to get in a quick workout, definitely check those out. I've put Cindy's website um, up here. It should be um, pretty visible to everyone who's watching. So 
check that out. Well, thank you so much, Cindy. This was awesome. It was really good to talk to you about exercise and, and staying motivated. Um, you've always been an inspiration to me, and you've always motivated me. So thank you for, for joining us. Well, my pleasure, Marissa, and thank you so much for having me. Sure. Everyone, that was Cindy Lay of Cindy Lay Fitness. Um, so thanks so much for watching, and um, I'll be doing more of these, so please make sure to check them out. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.